Hey folks, welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. When it comes to companion blades that are USA made out of high carbon steel, there's a lot out there on the market. And when I say the word companion, I'm talking about those knives that are usually under 10 ounces, they're fixed blades, they usually are between four and five inches of cutting edge and are really designed to either be paired with a larger ax or a larger blade or just that companion around the campsite to do your finer, more detailed tasks, regardless if it's food prep or preparing your fire with your family as you guys are enjoying a great camping trip or something like that. Well, I get this question a lot. What is a good companion blade or that good compact blade? And for the money, honestly, I have yet to find a knife like the Becker BK-16. This amazing blade designed by Ethan Becker has so much going for it and really in my mind has a lot of the features that even some of those other companion knives don't offer you. A few things right out of the gate is a full flat grind. Full flat grinds or very high saber grinds in this size range are really what I gravitate to and what I like. So this with its full flat grind makes it an awesome performer, awesome slicer and great at getting the finer work done. The other aspect is the spine. This is a 5 30 seconds thick spine or point zero point one six. That makes it just stout enough to handle harder tasks, but thin enough to just fly through. Again, food or other finer detailed work. Where a lot of other blades in this size range are pushing either 0.18 or 3 16 or sometimes even a quarter inch thick, which in my mind is overkill for such a knife in this size. The BK-16 comes with a decent sheath. It's got a pretty big footprint, but it's durable and has good Molly compatible as well as pocket attachments and has amazing Amazing, amazing ergonomics. Fits in my large size hands so well. Very contoured, not blocky at all. The Zytel handle scales don't really have any traction, but for the price point of about $65 to $70, I mean, you can't go wrong for what the BK-16 offers you. But if you double the price point to around, say, like $130, $140, there's a lot of other USA-made high-carbon steel knives in this same size range that maybe offer a few features here and there that make them even a little bit more desirable. Say like my Carta handle scales, maybe a Kydex sheath, those type of things that maybe make you want to gravitate towards those other blades more than the BK-16. I'm thinking of knives, say like an SE Laser Strike, an SE4, a Topps Brothers of Bushcraft, maybe a Topps Baja 4.5 or a Hog 4.5. Now I've used, I've tested, and I've reviewed all those knives I just listed to you. And yes, there's a lot of things going for those blades. But what I offer to you today is a concept that I'm going to be sharing with you. Not only showing you what the BK-16 can do, but by spending about $70, you can get yourself a really tricked out, well done BK-16 that I believe once it's been tricked out, ending up at around $130 to $140 will actually outperform all those knives I just listed to you. Not only in ergonomics and comfortability in the hand, but not only in blade performance in the 532nd inch thick blade and the full flat grind. So I hope you'll join me today as I take you through some simple steps on how to take a generic BK-16 and add a few little things to it that are gonna take this from being a very good $70 knife to a $140 knife that can blow out of the water a lot of the competition in that price range of 140 bucks. So let's go down the list. I'm gonna walk you through the things that you can purchase and the ways that you can trick this blade out. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna see that the BK-16 with some simple mods is gonna be able to beat out almost every other companion blade that's USA made 
out of 1095. Now, as I just said a moment ago, this does come with a very decent nylon stock sheath. You are getting the pouch, you're getting the Molly compatible, and you're getting two button straps, and it's rather secure in there. The problem for me is one, I just don't like nylon, and this is a very large footprint of a sheath for the knife itself. So step one to upgrading your BK-16 is the sheath. Bam, right here, this is an AZ Welke BK-16 sheath. Now we've reviewed AZ Welke in the past on a couple of our other knives and I have been very impressed with the craftsmanship and uh, the capability at a great price point. This taco design sheath is gonna run you under $35 over at the AZ Welke site. And this is the best part, is that you don't have to ship off your BK-16 to get yourself this Kydex sheath. They already have some BK-16s in stock, so they pre-mold them, so all you have to do is go over there, place your order, and give it a couple weeks, and bam, you're gonna be able to get yourself a molded, custom, if you will, Kydex sheath. And this sheath just fits so well. I love how tight and secure the knife clicks in there. Got a great thumb ramp, zero rattle, drainage hole, and loop attachments for either blade tech locks or their proprietary belt loops that they offer. You can pick these up as well. These are a little bit of an extra cost between $25 and $45, depending on the belt attachment that you wanna do. Or you can just do the, again, the taco design by itself. If you've got your own blade tech lock, bolt it on, you're good to go. So for a very reasonable price point and without having to ship off your knife, you're able to get yourself a rocking Kydex sheath. But that's not the best part, guys. Talking with AZ Welke and just how they do things and kind of told them what I was doing in making this concept video, I talked to them and uh, they have partnered with us here at Gideon's Tactical and are offering you viewers a 5% discount on your purchases of BK16 Kydex Sheaths. The promo code is GTBK16. GTBK16, I'll have links in the description below, not only of that promo code, but links to the AZ Welke site and links to the accessory page as well so you could check out their belt loops and belt attachments that they offer. But the promo code, again, GTBK16, is the promo code 5% off orders of any Kydex sheaths for your BK16, which is awesome that they've been willing to do that and for the first time ever here at Gideon's Tactical offer you guys, the viewers, a discount, which is so cool that they've partnered with us. So that's the first step, getting a rockin' sheath by AZ Welke for your BK-16. Now let's go to the next step. Step two is the handle scales. Now these handle scales, though very contoured and very comfortable, are gonna fit most hands very well, not gonna create any hot spots whatsoever. They are zy tell so they're really in my opinion too slick so you got two options either you can wrap it with duct tape which is kind of goofy or you know some sort of skateboard or some sort of you know like electrical tape or for $35, K-Bar makes aftermarket micarta handle scales. These are not only going to give it a better, more warm feel in your hand, but it also is gonna give you a little bit better traction and just kind of kick up the quality level of the knife. They're just a hair thicker and they just add a level of feel in your hands, particularly bare hands, that the Grivery or Zytel handled versions just don't, or scales don't offer you. Now you can pick these up on Amazon or eBay. I'll probably throw a link in the description below, but K-Bar makes these. They're not hard to find at all. And so for 35 bucks, you can get that extra level of traction and durability and quality that you may be looking for on your BK-16. Now there are other companies that make their own proprietary micarta handle scales for the BK-16. Those are usually gonna run you about 50 to 60 bucks. And uh, the Knife Connection also offers G10 versions with little scallops on the front. But again, those are gonna be about $55. And the point of this exercise is to give this knife a better feel and a better level of traction and ergonomics and sheath performance and some of the other things we're about to talk about without having to break the bank. Because once we start talking about those prices for handle scales, this knife starts to go up to be about 160, maybe even $170. And then in that price range, there's a lot of other knives out there that are gonna have more premium steels and then start to beat out the BK-16. So again, trying to keep this around
around the $130 to $140 mark. Obviously, if you want to trick out your BK16 to that level, go for it. And AZ Welke does offer sheaths that are compatible with the Knife Connection G10 handle scales as well. And the promo code that I just shared with you is valid on those sheaths as well, which is also an added bonus. But now we're cooking. We've got a Kydex sheath that's got some great features and just great quality. And now we have my Carta handle scales that are going to give us a better feel in the hand with more traction. We're almost there, but there's one last thing that we can do to the BK16. Now this black traction coating causes a few problems. It's rather gritty, wears off quickly, and hinders a little bit in his performance of cutting because there's drag with the coating. But because of the coating, there's no 90 degree spine. And I know for a lot of you out there, you care about 90 degree spines so you can strike ferrule rods and throw sparks. I'll be honest, I will really hope in the future that K-Bar just does a very flat, slick black coating would be awesome. And then we don't have to do maybe what we're about to do. We're gonna remove this black traction coating and put a patina on this knife. So I'm gonna show you how to strip the coating off of this and then take it to a simple belt sander, get a 90 degree spine on this thing, and this thing will be set and ready to go. Okay, so we've taken the handles off. And by the way, the Allen wrench you need for the handles to take them on and off is kind of an odd size. It's 9 64ths Allen wrench size, just to be aware of that. Some people were asking in some other previous videos. So the knife is ready to be stripped. Here are a few of the items that you're gonna need. A can of clean strip. This is gonna take off the black coating running about five bucks at any hardware store or Walmart. Coarse brass or wire brush to scrape off any extra residue. Any type of tool to help scrape off any of the extra residue that's left that the brush can't handle, like a paint scraper, or in this case, a razor blade scraper. Tongs, steel, or plastic will do to help rotate the knife once you've got the stuff sprayed on it. And this stripper stuff is brutal, so make sure to have eye protection and good quality heavy duty rubber gloves. All right, then we just pop the top. It says 15 minutes. I usually let it sit from 20 to a half hour uh, when I am doing this. So you just get a nice, good, thick foam there uh, on the, the knife, and now you just kind of let it sit, make sure that there aren't any little kids or animals around and that this is in a safe environment. Set your timer, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Now we use our tongs. Now that the time has expired, I'm just going to grab this guy. Flip it over, oh yeah, and it's already coming off pretty good, but we wanna get this other side now. So now that's flipped, thoroughly cover it again. All right, so now this has been soaking in the solution for about 40 to 50 minutes now, and I'm gonna to begin to pick this up, and you can see here, a lot of it is wanting to just slough off now, which is great. So this should be a super easy process. You can see here on the handle, you can see there, that's like a skin almost, just coming off all that gunk. So you can see that under layer is having a little bit of trouble here on the blade, so I'm scraping it. But there you go, you can see that right there. Look at that, awesome. Now we just got uncoated 1095 underneath. Mm -hmm. Now one nice thing is when I got all of the gunk off, I happened to have a 90 degree spine on this particular BK-16. Now I've done this operation twice and that wasn't the case on the very first version that I had. So before you put a patina on it, if it doesn't have a 90 degree spine and you're wanting that, just take it to any simple belt, belt sander and just get that 90 degree spine. It'll be very easy, easy for you to do that. All right, so there you have it. I've gotten it all ready for the patina. Now I have either the same tray cleaned out or another tray just to make the process faster. I usually do two trays so that you can clean up the other one while this one's sitting in the vinegar that we're about to stain the blade with. Now I'm gonna wipe this down with a damp towel just to get all the oils from my skin off because uh, that will affect the staining process. You wanna try and have it as clean as possible. Now you have an option with the patina that we're about to put on the knife. You can either go with a lighter patina or a darker patina. I'm choosing to go with a darker patina, so I'm gonna be using apple cider vinegar, and that's gonna make it a darker, grayer color, whereas if you just use white vinegar, it'll be a lot lighter color. All right, so now the knife has been air dried, and now it's time to pour on the vinegar. One thing to do while it's soaking is from time to time to come by and you'll see lots of little bubbles forming on the surface of the blade. You just need to tap it. Again, you don't use your fingers unless uh, you have, again, you know, 
gloves on. Uh, and just kind of try and get those bubbles off. Those bubbles will affect uh, just the coloration as well as the, the staining. If you want a more consistent stain, those bubbles you want to kind of bump off. You want to do that about every 10 minutes. So there we have it. I've let it soak for about 50 minutes and I've got a very nice dark patina on the knife that's gonna fight against rust. Let's get the handle scales back on this thing, take it back out, see what it does. Well, it's time to bring this video to a close. I really hope you've enjoyed this process and learning how to build the ultimate BK-16. I really believe that once you strip the coating, put on my car to handle scales and get an AZ Welke sheath, you have a BK-16 that's gonna outperform many USA made 1095 blades that are gonna be costing like 120, 130, $140 because they just don't have all the features now that you have with the BK-16 when it's tricked out like this. And this is by far one of my favorite companion blades once you get it running in this format and building the ultimate BK-16. So I really hope that this video has helped you out with your systems and building the right system for you and finding the right companion blade for you and getting it the way you want it. As always, check us out on all the relevant social media. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. And as always, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.